I have got to be the last person to smell this perfume, but today I'm talking about BDK Gris Charnel. I mentioned it last year when I made my video on finishing Diptyque's um, Philosicos, which was my favorite fake perfume. And I was kind of wondering like what other fake perfumes are out there, which should I replace this with? And I knew that Gris Charnel had fig in it. It's a figgy perfume. Um, and then some people told me I needed to try it because it has cardamom and black tea in it also, which are very much my thing. And other people told me that it would be too sweet for me probably if I liked Velocicos. And I do agree that it is maybe not my favorite fig perfume. Uh, and it is quite a bit sweeter than Velocicos. Uh, totally different, but I was still interested in smelling it. And now I finally have a sample of it. I have a sample of Gris Charnel by BDK. I actually was talking about it with one of my friends and I was like, have you smelled it? Because I feel like everybody has smelled it. It's a very trendy perfume. It came out in 2019, but still very, very trendy. Uh, and she said, yeah, I actually have a sample of it and I didn't really end up wearing it and I never bought a bottle, but she gave me her sample, which was really nice of her. So I have worn it two days now, not two days in a row, but I've worn it twice and I'm wearing it again today. I really put four or five sprays on at a time. So I am going through my sample quite quickly. And sure enough, it is a fig perfume. Like it does have fig in it, but fig to me in, in Gris Charnel is more of a top note and it's also with cardamom and black tea and for most of the wear of the scent i get a lot of black tea i get some cardamom after the fig is gone and then i get cardamom and tea and then for most of it i get really a black tea and the black tea is blended with like a sandalwood there's a sandalwood in the dry down there's like a booziness that's like with the tonka and i think because of that sweetness and the creaminess of the sandalwood this is a tea perfume that really does remind me of chai i know people talk about any kind of spicy perfume as chai like and any kind of tea perfume as chai like but this really to me smells like when you're making chai and you've got the spices kind of bubbling and then you add the tea and you can smell the tea and the chai in the air. That is what Gris Charnel to me smells like. So I really like that. I I think I may as well say that I do really like this perfume. I will say that every time I've tested out a BDK perfume, I kind of feel like the top notes really wow you and then it kind of gets a little bit generic and kind of ordinary in the dry down and usually that turns me off in a perfume because I'm like well I don't know if this is really anything that exciting but in this case every time I've worn it I've kind of forgotten about that and I can just kind of appreciate what the perfume smells like and especially especially with Gris Chanel like yesterday I was wearing it and I, like I forgot I had put it on and then during the day I was like oh, something smells really good and then I realized it was Gris Chanel Gris Chanel is what was smelling really really good and so it is really the tea and the sandalwood and um a little bit of that tonka like a little bit of that sweetness that comes out and it just smells so good it makes me think of sweet chai it is a little bit powdery but that's okay i love powder in my fragrances it is a little bit masculine leaning so not really a feminine chai perfume but again i think that's okay I saw that people have compared this to Dior Homme Intense, and if I had known that it smells like Dior Homme Intense, I think I would have tried it a lot sooner. And I agree, there is something in the dry down, definitely a couple of hours in its wear, that it does remind me of Dior Homme Intense. It really does. And maybe it's the cardamom, and maybe it's the iris that comes out, and there is like a really beautiful powderiness that's there. But I think Gris Charnel is creamier and sweeter and just a, a little bit smoother than Dior Homme Intense. I love wearing Dior Homme Intense um, and I can see that these are similar, but I think that Gris Charnel has that tea and 
I really enjoy that. So I can justify having both in my collection. I would say if you like Dior Homme Intense and you want something that's in the same kind of vibe, then you need to smell Gris Charnel. I wouldn't say it's a safe blind buy for anybody. I think I would have been disappointed if I blind bought this because it was different than what I was expecting. And, and usually perfumes are, so I really don't suggest blind buying it. But you can buy samples on their website. I know that this perfume right now is available at discounters so you can get it cheaper than it was originally if you felt like it was too expensive for you to even sample before because then if you liked it you'd like this bottle that was maybe too expensive maybe try sampling it now because it's a little bit more affordable not a ton but like a little bit more affordable and if you like it then you could get it i think it's safe to say i will probably miss it when it's gone and i would like to wear this a few more times i've promised a few friends that they could smell this um so i'm i'm not going to even be able to finish this sample on my own but i think i'll miss it enough when it's gone that maybe i'll get a bottle i'll kind of see if i even do miss it and maybe i'll try wearing dior Homme intense and see if i like that one better i think they're different but similar enough that if i like one better i might not get it but I, I actually really enjoy it and this is a thing like normally I don't try things that are very trendy because I know that people like things that are way sweeter than how I like them and if I had tried this in trying to replace Velocicos I would have been so disappointed but evaluated on its own I think it's pretty good and I can see why people like it it's just a really easy to wear perfume it feels uh, professional it feels put together but it's still approachable I think the kind of person that would wear this is like someone that works in like an art gallery or museum or something like that like they're very put together and organized but there's still an aspect to them that's approachable so you can like ask questions and and get a lot of information I think that's really a good thing the one thing that people say about this perfume, my friend said the same thing, and one of the reasons that she didn't end up getting this is because she thought the lasting power was not very good. Now, I don't know what people expect out of their perfume, but I could get six to eight hours out of this. Yesterday, I put it on at um, around lunchtime or maybe shortly after, and I could still smell it at the end of the day. Like, I could smell it at eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So I was happy with that. And again, I wore maybe five sprays out of this little sample vial. And, you know, these sprays are smaller than a spray out of a bottle. So six to eight hours, I think, is pretty good longevity. But it did motivate BDK to come out with, a, with an extra version of this scent. And I haven't tried that. Obviously, it's going to be stronger. Hopefully it's longer lasting, but I kind of like Gris Charnel just the way it is, and I will wear it, wear my sample some more. I'm wearing it today. I put four sprays on, two on each wrist. It's it's yummy. Like it is a good, easy to wear perfume, and I enjoy it. Yeah, that, that's Gris Charnel. It's like a velvety cocoon of a perfume, and it's actually not bad. So, yeah, stay tuned. If I end up getting a bottle, I will share. But for right now, I really, really enjoy my sample. And if if you like Dior Homme Intense, but you want something with tea in it, um, try this one. It's a good one. Okay, that's it from me. Bye.